A sprinter can accelerate with a constant acceleration for 2.3 seconds before reaching a top speed. He can run the 100 meter dash in a total of 10 seconds. Okay. And so then we want to know what is his top speed as he crosses the finish line. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is draw a picture. And the picture I'm going to draw here is going to be the time and speed. So his speed is going to increase linearly and then because it's a constant acceleration therefore it's going to be linear uh, speed increase straight line and then it's going to be level out at his max speed or as they say top speed and so we basically have two sections here and then we know that we'll say that this right here is 10 seconds because that's going to be his that's going to be um, 100 meters right there at 10 seconds and then the acceleration is going to turn from a constant to a constant zero or the speed is going to level out at 2.3 seconds so this is going to be the picture we're going to use right here. And we could do something similar for position, but I don't know if that'd be useful or not. So I'm going to skip that for now. So now that I got the picture drawn, I'm going to write up all the equations that I think might be useful. So this feels like a kinematics equation because we have distance, time, position, speed, acceleration. And so I'm going to write out my kinematic equations. So I'm going to, I always start by writing A equals A, meaning that the acceleration is constant. Velocity, which is really velocity final, equals acceleration times time plus initial velocity. Position equals, that's final position, one half a t squared, where a is acceleration, that's supposed to be a squared, plus v naught t plus x naught, initial position. And then a fourth equation that I write up, which is really not a fourth equation, it's just a combination of the second and third, is v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x, where delta x is just the difference in two positions, x final minus x initial. Okay, so now we have these equations written up. Um, we're going to try and apply these to our picture. So I'm going to look at the first section right here. And we're going to use, I'm going to try to use um, this second equation right here. There we go. And I'm just going to copy and paste that down here so I have it available. So if we look at the first section right here, this linear portion, I'm going to say that T equals 2.3 seconds, which seems reasonable. Um, I'm going to say initial velocity, which initial velocity in this picture is going to be down here. So it's going to be initial velocity. Um, up here is going to be, I'm going to call, call this V final. And over here, I'm going to say it's also V final. There's a little bit of ambiguity between which V final I'm talking about, either the V final after the 2.3 seconds or V final after the 10 seconds. But since the acceleration at that point is zero, the top speed of the runner, they'll, they'll be the same. So I'm going to let the ambiguity slide. Might cause me trouble later. I don't know. We'll see. Kind of an adventure. All right, so initial velocity is going to be zero. So I'm going to go up to here, zero. There we go. And then let's do, I'll make it a little bit thinner. There we go. Um, Yes, I think we can solve for velocity final. So velocity final equals 2.3 t, no a, because the 2.3 is the um, time. So velocity final is 2.3 times its acceleration. All right, so that's a relationship, and I don't think we can get any more out of that for now. So now let's look at the second 
portion. Is that what we want to do? Maybe. Actually, I'm going to look at how far they travel during that, that time as well. So if we look at how, so we want to find, we know up here is 100 meters. I'm going to call this x2.3 and that equals question mark. So let's try and find out what that is. So in this case, we look at v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. Then we have um, delta x equals x2.3 because that's going to be the difference between uh, our initial position, which we're going to say is 0, and 2.3. And 2.3 there just represents the time, seconds. I think it's 2.3 seconds. I should probably check that. Oh. Yes, 2.3 0. I'm going to leave off the 0. All right, so we got that part. So I'm going to say that v final squared equals, or no, v final is going to be, be 2.3a. It's going to be 2.3 squared a squared. v initial is going to equal squared. It's going to be 0 squared, which I'm just going to write as 0. And therefore, we have delta x, which is the same as x2.3, which is going to equal, so that part goes to 0, and we have 2.3 squared a squared over 2 times a. So we basically took these, moved it over there. Yeah, I'm good with that so far. Do a little bit of simplification here. One of the a's goes away, and we're left with 2.3 squared over 2 times a. Does that seem fair? That seems fair. I'm good with that. Yeah, let's go with that. All right, so now that's our second relationship, which is x2.3. So now let's look at the second portion over here, right along there. So for this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move my equations up. I always kind of write those up to start with just so I have them available and can look at them. Now let's take a look at this third equation, and we're going to apply this to the second half. So for this, let's say um, x in this case equals, I'm going to say x100, meaning that that's, um, actually I'm going to say that that is x10, because before I label the other x using the time, and so I'm going to say that this is the x10, which is x10 seconds, which is going to be the same as x final. So x final, x is x final, which is that, which is 100 meters. Uh, let's see, acceleration equals zero. So this is four, that's terrible, 2.3 less than t, less than 10. So acceleration is zero, so I'm just going to get rid of that whole term right there. Initial velocity is going to be the uh, velocity final, which is also the velocity final that we had earlier. So I'm going to call that 2.3a, because that's what we found earlier. 2.3a. And I know it gets kind of confusing because you think that this a is the same as that a. They're actually different A's. Uh, we're just going to keep that in our head, though. But you're right. I should come up with better notation. Uh, time. The time for this is going to be 10 seconds minus 2.3 seconds. So that's going to be 10 minus 2 is 8. 8 minus 0.3 is 7.7. 7.7 seconds. And X initial it's going to be the x final from our previous portion, which is our delta x, which is going to be x 2.3, which gives us 
2.3 squared over 2a. So 2.3 squared over 2a. I know my a's look like 2's, which make this whole thing just treacherous. All right, so let's go back, take a look, see what we got here. So plugging these all in, v naught t is uh, 2.3a times t, which is 7.7. .7 plus x naught, which we decided is 2.3 squared over 2, also times a. And that's going to equal x final, which we decided was 100. I know that looks like a 6. It's not a 6. It's a 100. So there's probably a few ways we can simplify this. The way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to subtract out, I'm going to factor out a, as this would be an A, times 2.3 times 7.7 .7 plus 2.3 squared over 2 equals 100. And, yep, I'm going to go to my calculator now. On, on, clear. So I'm going to do 2.3 times 7.7 .7 plus 2.3 squared over 2. Then we'll do 100 divided by second answer. And that gives us an acceleration of 4.9. Does that seem reasonable? Maybe. And then meters per second squared. Okay, so I'm good at that. So now we know what the acceleration is during, go back to my picture, this portion right here. That slope right there, that acceleration is 4.9. So we can now go back to this to find our V final, which is this value up here, which is going to be the same as our final value, which is going to be the speed at which he crosses the finish line. So I'm going to take uh, v final is 2.3 times acceleration. Therefore, that equals 2.3 times 4.9, which gives us, calculator, times 2.3, ah, I'll say 11.3, 11.3 meters per second. Okay. So, final answer, 11.3 meters per second. To recap what we did here, because this was pretty convoluted, um, this is really just kind of walking into a dark forest and hoping to get to grandmother's house. So, what we did, we read the question, drew a picture. We kind of clicked that, all right, we're going to do kinematics because we have velocity, position, distance, time. It's like probably a kinematics equation. Um, we're also told that we have a constant acceleration, which means we can use our kinematic equations right here. From there, I then wrote up my kinematic equation because that's pretty much always the step you do after you draw the picture. You always have them available. And then I looked at the first part and drew up, drew up all the data I knew. I looked at velocity equals at plus v naught, found a relationship between final velocity and acceleration. I looked at v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. Where we found a relationship between its, his position after his acceleration is done and the acceleration. We then looked at our second half where we did x equals 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught. And we just started plugging in values and things kind of worked out. And that gave us an acceleration. We then took that acceleration and went back to one of our first equality, equalities that we found. The 2.3 times acceleration is its final speed. Able to plug in the acceleration we got, and it worked. So this is one of those problems where I really had no idea what I'm doing when I'm going through it. All I know is I drew a picture, write a formula, and just keep working through stuff. When you don't know what to do, find something you can do and just go through that, and sometimes it works out well. This is one of those times, and worked out fine. So, hope that helped. See you next time.